All right, guys, here we go. 6900 XT from AMD, kind of like the last graphics card we've kind of been waiting on for this entire launch season, at least for the end of this year. We're gonna talk today about whether or not it even holds a candle to the RTX 3090, which is what this kind of been touted as being the 3090 killer by some other people out there. And uh, we're gonna see whether or not that holds true today. So hang on to your butts. This is gonna be one of those wild rides. Um, this is the top dog offering from AMD. It's, it's re-entry into the extreme, there's a bent fin, it's really bugging me. Oh, oh sorry, distracted easily. This is uh, their re-entry into the high-end graphics market, something we haven't seen them attempt since back when Vega and Radeon 7 was kind of sort of a thing, but never really competitive. Um, this was touted to be a, an RTX 3090 esque card, and I can um, tell you right now that for the most part, it looks exactly like a 6800 XT. The cooler is identical, the dimensions are identical, but it's a $999 MSRP, and obviously, uh, we're going to talk about pricing. And the hypothetical that MSRP is exactly what you could go and buy it for. The volatile pricing and scalping and all that stuff going on, we're gonna hope all the pricing comes back to normal, but we have to go buy the pricing that is actually announced by the manufacturer. That's the way that it works. So whether or not you get it for that price is obviously gonna be different. Um, there are custom board partner cards that will be coming out, obviously. All your favorite brands like Sapphire and XFX and PowerColor and all of them that are the usual suspects when it comes to making custom AMD cards will be making custom 6900 XTs also. But if the 6800 and 6800 XT launch taught us anything is that it seems like there is even less allocation of AMD cards available for launch than there was for NVIDIA. So finding the, the AMD cards is proving to be much tougher than even NVIDIA. So we're gonna hope that things do normalize, but I'm even mentioning all this, yes, to get the obvious out of the way that this is a really crappy time for graphics card launches for anyone trying to keep up with demand and getting it for the prices that they're advertised for, or at least MSRP, is very, very difficult. So we're obviously operating on the hypothetical that you could walk into your big box retailer or go to your favorite e-tailer site and buy one for the price that they're supposed to be. Moving forward, um, it's essentially a 6800 XT with obviously more processors or more stream processors and a higher power limit. 300 watt is what's advertised. But I'm gonna go ahead and kind of go right into the whole too long didn't watch, spoiler alert, this card was actually fairly disappointing to me this time around for several reasons. To understand those reasons, go and show you the charts so that you guys can see how it compared to the titles that we use. Um, one thing I want you to notice here is I completely omitted Valhalla, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is a new title that we started using because of extreme inconsistencies, not only with our AMD cards, but our Nvidia cards as well. There's something just obviously wrong and broken with that card. And is, it is a new Ubisoft title, so that's to be expected. Um, but anyway, let's go and look at the charts and let's talk about it.
so this is advertised as a 300 watt part. Uh, and what AMD was kind of doing is they were kind of touting that they've got as much power as a 3090 or up to a 3090 with Rage Mode and the uh, Smart Access Memory turned on, which, as you guys, guys may notice with our charts, we are using an Intel CPU uh, and not any sort of Smart Access Memory turned on. Because one of the reasons why we don't use that is, one, Rage Mode is something you have to activate. And we test our cards out of the box, which means they come out of the box, they go onto the system, they play games. That's how we do it. That's how most people operate their graphics cards, especially this time around with more people buying graphics cards and, and new systems for the first time, they may not be very versed in going in there and tweaking these settings to get more performance out of their card like rage mode or enabling smart access memory because of the fact that um, there's so many people out here that are, that are doing this for the first time. And that's why I recently put out a video showing the basics of understanding your graphics card so that people could actually have a little bit of, of baseline knowledge on what some of these specs mean, what some of the settings mean, and what they're seeing on screen, and what that means when they start looking at the stuff in programs like GPU-Z and MSI Afterburner and such. First things first, you might have noticed those charts were quite the FPS roller coaster. Just complete swings from one end of the spectrum to the other. Just completely bottlenecked. By the way, 1080p, we just took it off the chart entirely because it is just bottleneck city. Obviously for both the 3090 and this card, it is just bottleneck city. Um, I can tell you right now, it was some 1080p numbers were lower than 1440p because the bottleneck was so hard. Uh, and because the GPU was spending probably more time swinging its uh, core clock speed because of how hard it was being CPU bound that we actually got less performance in 1080p than 1440 in many instances. So this card obviously being a 144 hertz 1440p card or a 60 plus FPS 4K card obviously is where this, this thing is sort of belongs. Um, those swings were just like, it caused me to investigate and go, what is going on here? Now it's important to note the drivers that we test with, these are pre-release drivers. They are not the same driver number that you'll see when you go and update your Radeon software to get the latest drivers for your newest graphics cards. These are, I don't wanna say band-aided drivers, but they really feel like it in many of these instances where they work, but man, we never know if we're giving you the full customer experience because they'll come out with another driver on launch day that is supposed to be a more official, like polished driver. So because of these massive FPS swings and some titles, we didn't even put it on the chart because we're only comparing this to the 6800 XT, the 3080 and the 3090, this card was being beaten by the 3070 in some titles. And that's because of not only driver optimizations and titles that are obviously a little bit more leaning towards Nvidia and the Nvidia technologies and then the AMD titles, it's obvious that this card wins with AMD titles that have AMD logos on them because, you know, subroutines and all that sort of stuff. Maybe one day we'll do a video about when people talk about intentional bottlenecking with one brand versus another. That's all about subroutine and the way it does its instructions based on the card that's identified. Something we can talk about later. But then I decided to investigate what is going on. Phil and I were like, did something happen with our CPU and our memory? Did that get reset? Because we do run an overclock on our 10900K to try and alleviate as much of the bottlenecks as possible. That all checked out, nothing was wrong. We had the right driver installed. But then when we went into Radeon software, by default, out of the box, it's set to the profile it's supposed to be, which is profile default. That just means out of the box settings. But we noticed under load, it was only limiting, or it was only allowing 250 watt power draw. And I looked at Phil and I went, 250 watts? Okay, interesting. So what happens if I increase the power consumption or increase the power limit? If you're wondering what I'm talking about, you should go watch our, our video a few videos ago. We explain what all these settings mean. So this card has a boost limit of 2250 out of the box. Now it was sitting in the 2300s and as high as the low 2400s, just like the 6800 XT. It's obvious that AMD has got a very high clocking core in here. However, its IPC is obviously lower than that of Nvidia's because of the fact that if it was on par with it, the higher clock speeds would get you more performance than we're actually seeing out of this. So high clock speed's good, but we just need to get more you know, oomph out of each cycle. But we noticed 250 watt was where it was stopping. So I went ahead and maxed the power limit, which is an additional 15%, just like we saw with the 6800 XT. And the power limit immediately started showing 300 watts, which allowed our core clock to come up to nearly 2500 megahertz and lock there. Well, as we find out, this is a 300 watt card and out of the box, it was power limiting to 250, which as such was also limiting the core clocks. But that doesn't necessarily hold up either because if it's a 200 or 2250 megahertz card, we were above that anyway, 
in the high 2300s, low 2400s, which tells us that the boost algorithm based into the card of the turbo clocks was happening. So I can't really explain the weirdness that we were seeing. The core clocks were higher than they should have been for the standard boost tables. However, the power limit was 50 watts below where it should have been. And an extra 50 watts can level out the core clocks, which would keep some of these crazy swings that we were seeing happen. Now, one other thing that we observed is that we were getting uh, pretty close to, and in some titles exceeding 100 C on the junction temperature, which is the hottest part of the die, and then over 80 C on the edge temperature. That's significantly warmer than we were seeing on the 6800 XT. Yeah, but Jay, there's more cores in there, so that makes sense. But that was at the 250 watt. As soon as I increased the power limit to where it should be the 300 watt, as it should have been out of the box, then we saw the temperature start to climb even higher, as high as 110 C. Again, people would say that's normal. So there's kind of a trifecta happening here. One, the card is not being allowed 300 watts like it's supposed to, at least not with this driver out of the box with whatever BIOS is preloaded on this card. Second, the temperature was high enough to where that starts affecting your core clocks as well. To try and keep that junction temperature from exceeding its TJ max, it's gonna start to pull down core clocks. So now you have power limit and temperature pulling down core clocks. The third thing here is the fan algorithm on here is extremely, extremely conservative in that we could never hear the fans on this. But if you allowed the fans to ramp up a little more, you might get the control of, or the temperature under control a little better, and then we would see a little bit more stable core clock as well. I have absolutely no doubt that a lot of the performance fluctuations we were seeing in performance were directly related to those three things, which it's kind of funny that I did the video I recently did about how all of those play into the performance of a graphics card, because it's what allowed me to kind of identify what was happening with this card. So with some titles also, just being completely poorly optimized with drivers. Uh, Ghost Recon's Wildlands being one of them. Yes, I know that's like a four-year-old title, maybe even more. However, we saw this card performing less, perform or getting less FPS than our 3070. We're talking a $499 graphics card versus a $999 graphics card. And let's say you had a 2080 Ti, which is the 3070 is equivalent to, and you were like, I'm going to upgrade to a 6900 XT, and that's one of your favorite titles that you still play, you took a downgrade in performance by going to this card. So these are some of the things that you hear people say with AMD, like, well, they make great hardware, but their drivers suck. And this is one of those times that's a perfect example of that. And that we first observed that weird performance, you can go back and check out our 6800 and 6800 XT review, where I showed the same thing with Wildlands, weeks and weeks ago, giving us this really weird low performance and low, util not low utilization. Utilization showed 98% utilized for this card, but the FPS was extremely low. Well, I had hoped to see that maybe the driver would be updated and that this, this new architecture would be supported in that title uh, a little better than it is, at least some sort of improvement since then. Absolutely nothing. So that means the driver team and the development team, it's an old title that at this point you could probably consider forgotten when it comes to the new hardware. So that would really stink if you're seeing good numbers on new hardware like Borderlands 3, this card decimates all. And so does the 6800 XT. That's an AMD title. Nvidia does okay in it, but because it's an AMD title, it utilizes this card to its fullest potential and we see it literally mop the floor with Nvidia. But we're not seeing that across the board and we're not seeing that nearly as closely as AMD like, is, per, is kind of portraying in their benchmarks. And the reason for that is all of their benchmarks for this card that we saw included smart access memory turned on in rage mode. Now, first of all, rage mode, it's almost complete BS because the card is already boosting past its turbo clock that it's advertised anyway. So you're getting a self overclock out of this. Smart access memory is something I don't support right now. And the reason for that is it's one of the greedy sides of AMD kind of showing its ugly face in that they could have supported previous generation Ryzen cards, no problem whatsoever, or Ryzen CPUs, without having to limit it to 5000 series. Now, if you've tried to buy a 5000 series CPU, you know already they're as much of a unicorn as these GPUs are. Well, maybe not quite as much, but close. In fact, I've seen so many people settling on buying 3000 series because they simply cannot find a 5000 series. I'm not gonna go as far as to call it a paper launch, but I'm gonna say it was definitely low inventory and low stock at launch, and it hasn't really been readily restocked. So the fact that AMD decided to limit something that they could have allowed access to, to older CPUs that are on the exact same motherboard as you need for 
smart access memory, which is a 500 series motherboard, there's absolutely no reason other than greed that they should have locked it down to the 5000 series. Now, that means for the majority of you out there, I'd say in the high 90s percentile, aren't gonna be able to use smart access memory anyway because you don't have a 5000 series. So what we showed you is the real out of the box performance experience you'll get with this card in its current state of drivers and just the way that various games are utilizing this hardware. The 6800 and 6800 XT didn't seem to be nearly as limited as this card because like I just said, our particular model with the drivers and whatever BIOS is loaded on here is limiting itself to 250 watt, which is 50 watts less or a significant amount of power that the GPU needs to maintain its core clocks lower than it should have been out of the box. Now I plan on investigating, seeing if a new BIOS or drivers will fix this and doing another video about what happens with the 300 watt. But if I bring you a review and say, I had to go in there and tweak it to get the advertised numbers, then that's a, that's a misrepresentative review. So the review of this card is that as shipped, I can't recommend it. My recommendation, if you're looking at buying a graphics card, that's an amazing value. Again, based on MSRP, that would still be the 6800 non-XT because you're getting numbers that are really close to a 3080 at significantly less cost and faster than a 3070. Again, hypothetically, if you can get your hands on it. Phil and I were talking about it and we feel like this card is really more like a 6900 non-XT. And even then, that's if it works flawlessly in all titles, which we're not experiencing. So like anything else, I don't know if it's rushed. The hardware is not, the hardware is solid. The hardware is solid, but it's only gonna be as good as the software supporting it. And I really, really wanna hope that this is not another ugly AMD driver issue again, like we saw with the 5700 XT. I really hope AMD gets uh, their software crap together before these become widely available. Because right now, as far as the 6900 XT is concerned, I have to tell you, just like the 3900, even at $500 less, it's a horrible, horrible value. It is closer to the performance of a 3080 than it is to the performance of a 3090. Yes, the price is also closer, but not as close as the performance is. So yes, the 3090 being a terrible value for gamers, absolutely. A thousand dollar AMD card that performs like a 3080 is equally as bad. And that's where I'm gonna kind of leave this review. If you guys uh, do me a favor, watch more reviews because with a card like this that like I showed you with some titles just completely feels like it gets left out and no optimizations at all. If you wanna make sure that the card is compatible with your favorite games, you need to find people that are reviewing with your favorite games because it's impossible for a single reviewer to review every game out there to show you what the performance is gonna be like. You've gotta watch multiple reviews. We all use different test beds, te different test methodologies, and it's your job as reviewers to kind of absorb that information and digest it and then poop out an opinion on whether or not you want one because you're gonna find differing opinions, different test methodologies, different fanboyisms and different biases. Let's face it, we all have our biases. And you guys are already saying, yeah, Jay, your bias is towards NVIDIA. Well, that's honestly because the software side of it is so solid. And it really feels like this card, like the word that keeps coming to mind to me is rushed. Not the card, the driver support for it. So, like I said, that's where we're gonna leave it. Watch as many reviews as you can, because let's face it, that's all you can do. You can't really go out and buy it. I guarantee this is also gonna be a paper launch. I can call it a paper launch because if everyone justified calling an NVIDIA launch a paper launch, the paper that this is launched on hasn't launched yet. 